Boss, after a nil nil draw against Crawley Town last night, Colchester United and E10 at the weekend, and we'll be looking to avenge the reverse fixture. Yeah, there's um, there's some fixtures like that this year that were well, in the second half of the season that we have got to uh, do better in and uh, try to reverse the fact that we've not picked up points against certain teams. So, um, you know, it was a strange game when we went there. We changed formation. We changed quite changed quite a bit in our setup for that day, and um, we started the game okay. And, and and then a little bit like like there has been on a, some certain occasions this season, we conceded and you know, and then didn't bounce back as we would have wished. So, uh, yep, yeah, be going out to to do everything we can to use the positivity out of the, the you know the manner in which we got we got the draw on Tuesday night. Coming off the back of a genuine transfer window, obviously we'll be seeing a lot of clubs that we might have seen once, but could have completely new personnel the second time around. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's quite interesting, isn't it, when you look at the transfer window as to where the top end of the game hasn't spent the millions or billions sometimes that that gets that gets uh, thrown around in, in in transfer windows. It's uh, it's been the lower end that there's probably been a little bit more activity, but I think some of that would probably be. Uh, related to the fact that not a lot of people turn their squads around or over uh, in the summer because of because of obvious reasons. So yet yeah, we'll be coming up against new new opposition. I think with Colchester obviously having their game called off, it means that we missed an opportunity to see what they might be about. Now they've signed one or two new ones, but um, as I've said before, it's about trying to make every game as much as possible about Leighton Orient and not worrying too much whilst respecting the opposition, of course. Obviously talking about Leighton Orient and, and arrivals. Four of our new lads played a sizable portion of last night. Looking back at it, are you happy with how they got into the game? Yeah, I mean, for, for I suppose in an ideal world, you would say that you'd much rather have been a game that you were talking about us creating uh, and being the, the dominant team. But the circumstances became what they became in the game and we had to adapt. And I think what was most pleasing for me is that everybody whether you were a new player or or an existing member of the squad that everybody showed the the attitude and the desire and the focus and the qualities that we've been asking for you know we've talked about when we don't play well how can we go and get points out of games and um albeit i think we were probably the team that created the more clearer opportunities on the night we showed a lot of other qualities that um well, good to see, like I say, across the ball. But certainly in terms of answering your question, yeah, I think the boys, the new players, really integrated themselves in that performance. Mm. In terms of, obviously, consistency for Orient, uh, we've probably seen a way forward not be as strong as, as home form. So having had that point now, it's really good to go back home and try and back that up on Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it's important that we try to win that game. You know, I, I think we all got um, very, we're all very happy with the way that the game and the result panned out on, on Tuesday. But at the same time, it wasn't a win. You know, we would have, we, we, we felt that we could and should have come away with, with winning the game despite the circumstances. So yes, we need to back it up with a, with a win at home. Um, we need to continue to make sure that our home form is of the standard that it has been throughout the season. And then, as you said, if we can add points and three points on on the road on a more more regular basis than we have done, um, I think we'll, we'll be in a very good place. I don't think our performances away from home have, have, have been too bad. I think uh, Bolton was disappointing. I think um, the games that have run... Before that, we've been the better team for periods in those games and come away with nothing. So it's about tweaking little things to make sure we're a bit more, um, a bit more ready to to dig in when 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 it when it's not quite all on our terms. Mm. So the squad news for the weekend. There's a, there's a few people to cover, um, especially yeah. in the final third. If we start with Lee Angle, obviously we saw him um, hobble off a while back. Is there any update on, on how long we can see him sideline for? Well, Lee's scan came back very negative uh, from our perspective and certainly from Lee's perspective. So we're going to see, well, when I say we're going to not see Lee for, for a while now. Uh, and what's been very frustrating for the treatment of that injury is that Lee's, uh, there was a positive case of COVID in and around Lee and his family. So it's meant that he hasn't been able to come into the training ground pretty much not long after after suffering that injury. So it's made it really difficult to start the process off of assessing where we go in terms of his rehab, but all I can say is he's going to be a while on in terms of in terms of Lee and, and the stage that he's at. And then it'll probably be a bit fresher. We might not have as much information, but obviously, Real Madrid it looked like a similar kind of injury, injury with his hamstring last night. Yeah, and everyone would have seen this sort of state, for the want of a better phrase, that that Ruel come off the pitch in. You know, very emotional, and um, it's, it was it was a tough one for him to take. So I thought he started the game extremely well, and it was his real 
first time that I would have said that I'm standing there waiting f to see his performance. The other times he's coming off the back of periods out and his season's been really stop start. And I think people need to be uh, sympathetic in terms of how it's panned out for a while. You know, the start of the season was related to his contract issue. We all know, we all know about that and it was resolved in the manner that everybody wanted, including Ruel. Um, but then we had, he had a, he had a COVID issue himself. He had it in the family. He's been stop start. He's gone away with Cyprus. The whole season has meant that he hasn't really had a clear run at anything. So um, he picks up that injury at a stage where I really felt like, right, come on, this is the time to see where he's at. So uh, extremely frustrated. You're right, too soon to know exactly what the extent of the injury is, but it doesn't look particularly great if I'm being brutally honest right now. Mm. Two players that haven't um, been included in the match day squad, um, certainly last night, Josh Colson and, and Louis Dennis. Can you give us updates on those? Well, not really, not not COVID related for both of them, to be honest, but illness related, which uh, I don't think many people really know about too many illnesses other than COVID at the moment. But um, Lou's was related to stomach issue at the, at the weekend, which meant he couldn't make the journey to Bolton. I'm sure everyone can understand that as soon as we get any sort of signs of illnesses we have to be extremely careful because of our undoing early in the season related to COVID so it wasn't it wasn't that for Lou but what it did mean was that he missed some training he missed the trip he missed the game to at Bolton so therefore it sort of went into really into uh, Tuesday night's squad selection that, that that we didn't feel Lou was at the stage to be uh, to be included similar to to Josh really obviously he played at the weekend and then um phoned in the next day with with a sore throat and like I say for, for what any any other stage of our lives would have just been considered a little bit of a an illness but that's eating into the week and again because of the circumstances because of um, spreading anything around a, a group of people and group of players at the moment we've had to err on the side of caution and, and, and Josh hasn't been in so far this week so um, Lou has Lou's trained and, and we feel he's in a place that's um, prepares him for being back in and around the squad uh, with Josh's we'll have to sort of see how it pans out throughout the rest of the week mm. Another absentee and, and probably not illness related is obviously Jordan Thomas we've seen he's, he's played this week for uh, Norwich under 23s so it's fair to say that he's probably uh, not going to be involved in any coming games Yeah I think certainly for the short term I, 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 I've got nothing but real praise for Jordan um, he came here and we had real high hopes for him coming and, and really pushing for a, for a spot at in the team and um, it's been tough for him you know I think it's always tough on your first time loan if you sat down with Tunji he'd tell you that uh, the circumstances are new and they're different George Marsh would have been the same last year and it's always a very eye-opening experience for people but it hasn't worked out as we would have hoped and certainly as Jordan would have hoped but he showed a real maturity um, he showed a real good application to come in and do his job every day I think as it's come towards the January window Jordan's a young lad that needs to be playing football. And, um, you know, we've got our own young pros here at the moment that are not playing week in, week out. So we want the 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 best for these young people and, and these young players. So we felt it was right for because Jordan had the opportunity to go back and play for, for Norwich in their 23 to so start to get some games under his belt. So I don't think you can ever say no, never. Uh, but right now it's it's the right thing for Jordan to go and get some football under his, under his belt. In terms of some good news, obviously with um, Danny Johnson, you said last night speaking to Dave that he looks like he could be in contention. I mean, how close is he, and, and is that the kind of injury injury where he's going to need to build himself back up again? I don't think so. N normally, the response to coming back from an injury is obviously fitness issues. I don't think Dan's been out long enough to, for us to really be concerned about his physical state. I think he's been out long enough for him to really lose fitness. You would have maybe missed out on a bit of sharpness and he's been on the bike doing his work rather than training so it's not going to be the same but I think we see with Adam Thompson last night with a period of time that he's out that it is possible to come back and and, and, and play and, and be ready to to go on a run around you know for the want of a better phrase uh, what we've got to be careful is that we don't bring Dan back too soon and he suffers another setback so I know that we have to probably clip his wings a little bit and, and manage him because he's he's chomping at a bit to get back out on the pitch. But we've got to make sure it's right. So if it means he's available to be in and around the squad at the weekend, then fantastic. I'll take that support from the physio. But it's not my nature. It's not my way of managing to be booting the door down saying get Danny Johnson back out here at all costs. Because if we do that and we lose him for the rest of the season, we leave ourselves in a really vulnerable state. So it might be that he's around at the weekend. We'll, we'll see how that looks over the next coming days, as, as I mentioned, post-match on Tuesday night. If it means that he has to miss another one, another two, 
then that's the that's the solution and the option that we'll take to make sure that when we get Danny Johnson back, we've got Danny Johnson back for the rest of the season and not just for a 20-minute cameo that's going to set him back at the weekend. So all our eyes are focused on getting him back out and back, back into the, the squad and the team. But at the same time, we've got to do right by, by Danny and, and, and the club. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, boss. Cheers.